I'm going to go over the five levels of escalation for unwanted behavior. Now think of this as a ladder. You're going to go right on to the next rung quickly in the beginning. Okay, there's five levels. Real quick, you're going to try the first one, then if it's not working within a couple of seconds, you move on to the second. That's not working right on to the third, etc. But you will see with practice and over time that you're not going to need all five levels going forward. You might only need like three. And then the next day, maybe you only need level number one. It just, it depends on the situation and the arousal level of your dog. So these are for behaviors like nipping, jumping, jumping and nipping, uh, barking, chewing on people, chewing on furniture, whatever the case may be, whatever unwanted behaviors you are dealing with that are due to over arousal. So this is like a crazy dog. So we, we're gonna try to get his brain back down there where he can think and process what you're asking him to do. Level number one is negative punishment. So this sounds terrible. It sounds like the worst thing you can do to your dog. But in a behaviorist terms, negative means take away and punishment means the behavior decreases. Just like positive means you add something and reinforcement means the behavior increases or continues. So with negative punishment, even though it sounds terrible, you wanna take away what the dog wants in order to decrease that unwanted behavior. So with Frankie, for example, his big thing is putting the harness on because once that harness is on, he knows it predicts that he's gonna go for a walk or he's gonna go for a car ride, he's gonna get out of the house. Um, so in order to decrease that jumping, and sometimes he jumps with his mouth open, I am going to bring in my hands, I'm going to turn away from him, I'm gonna give him my back and cut off all eye contact. I'm not gonna be doing this. Okay, because what he wants is attention because he knows if I'm looking at him, then I'm likely to put the harness on and there we go. But you just can't because the bottom line is you have to stop the dog from practicing these unwanted behaviors. So, like I said again, level number one, negative punishment and with jumping or biting, pull in your hands close because hands are targets. They're going to be jumping on your hands, turn away from the dog and cut off eye contact. Oh, off. Yes. Yes. Level number two for unwanted behavior on the behavioral ladder. Level number two is asking for incompatible behavior. So this is where some basic obedience cues come in. So if your dog has already been trained to do things, especially the way, Frankie, off. So that's, he knows off, okay? Um, if he's been trained to do a sit, a wait, a touch, an off, things like that, you're gonna try to get him engaged in some basic obedience cues that you are gonna reward him for. Um, and for example, with him, it's going to be sit and wait. So the wait is from two to, at his age, he's a year old, two to six seconds where he's just sitting there. That helps get the brain back, okay? That decreases his arousal or stimulation level to where he can actually process what you're asking him to do. Um, and again, like with all these levels, you're gonna move on to the next one quickly. You're not gonna spend 10 minutes trying to get him to sit and wait while you try to put the harness on. It's not gonna, it's not feasible. Uh, so you move right on to level number three when level two fails. Sit, yes. Good boy, take it. Sit. Yes, wait. <coughs> Frankie, sit. Off. Off. Touch. Yes, sit. Yes, wait. Yes, take him. Yes, sit. Good. Wait. Yes, take him. Touch, good, sit. Sit, good, wait. Number three is having him do an activity that redirects his attention. So for this, um, for, for him, because he's going out for a walk, he's excited anyway, I did play a little bit of tug with him. Um, and then I resorted to the snuffle mat because that does calm him down. 
So you can use Kongs, you can use licky mats, snuffle mats, a quick game of tug, maybe ha throwing a ball uh, around for him, giving him a nylon bone, giving him a Benny bone. You're going to redirect his attention onto something else. Now this one is really important for the puppy teething, chewing, biting. Okay, so the dog, let's say your puppy is chewing on your shoelaces or chewing on your leggings. You wanna give him something else to do. Give him something else to chew on, okay? And this also helps decrease that stimulation or arousal level. So then you can really connect with your dog and have them do what you want. Good boy, yes, good boy. Frankie, off, yes. Drop it, yes. Wait. Yes, take it. Frankie, sit. Good. Wait. Sit. Good. Wait. Take it. Yes, good boy, good boy, <laughs> good boy, good boy, good boy, good boy. Frankie, drop. Frankie, touch. Good. Sit. Good. Wait. Yes, take it. Good. Wait. Touch. Good. Sit. Now, Good. I have in here, I have kibble. I have some chunky treats, and I have my favorite beef dried, uh, freeze freeze dried beef liver. So you kind of mash them in there, and then I'm gonna put this mat down. This hooks into level number three, which is giving him an alternative behavior from jumping on me. So this is redirecting his tension onto the floor, and then he's having to forage and snuffle around in the snuffle mat to get the food. Okay, level number four on the ladder of escalation for unwanted behavior is a brief timeout. So by brief, I mean two minutes or less. This is where you're gonna give your dog a timeout in their crate or in their get it off room, in the bathroom, out on the patio, wherever where you are removing him from the temptation of doing whatever it is that he's doing. Now, two minutes or less, and the reason why is because each of these first four levels that you're going to try is giving your dog a choice. You want him to make the correct choice, which is to stop that unwanted behavior. Uh, and so each of these first four levels are giving him that chance to make the correct choice. In the beginning, he's not used to it. Like I said, that's why you're gonna go quickly up the ladder, but you'll see eventually going forward, you're only gonna need a couple of them to stop that unwanted behavior. When the dog chooses, to do what you're asking him to do, then you know that true learning is taking place. He's coming to understand, hey, my people don't like it when I'm jumping on them. They don't like it when I'm nipping their shoes or their clothes. They don't like it when I'm barking at them for attention. So this is level four, brief time out, less than two minutes. Your dog is not gonna think of it as a punishment. I get that question all the time. As long as your dog is already acclimated to the crate or the time out room or something like that. Yeah, this I would not do for brand new puppies who maybe have some isolation distress and are not good in the crate or good separated from you. That's a whole nother issue. But this is for dogs who, again, unwanted behavior is due to overstimulation. So this is Frankie's gated off area. So this is his time out room. Um, and he has stuff in here to do and I'm gonna give him some more. So he's got some balls in here, there's contoy, there's a bone, and then he is hesitant to go in there. He can't wait to go for a walk, he wants to get the harness, I wanna go for a walk. But I can't let him do it if he's jumping all over me. So again, I can do this, I can throw treats in there, get him in there, 
And again, level four is two minutes or less, then you let him out and see if he's calmed down and improved the behavior. And level five is a longer timeout yes. as needed. And final level of escalation for unwanted behavior is a longer timeout as needed. So for example, the holidays are coming up. Let's say you're having a house full of people, or maybe your sister-in-law with a two-year-old nephew is coming over. You cannot allow your dog to practice that unwanted chewing, nipping, barking, biting. You just, you can't do it. So in this case, depending on the situation, it's a longer timeout as needed. So let's say you're having people over for Thanksgiving dinner. Your dog, if he's that aroused and that overstimulated, cannot stop with the first four levels, he's gonna need a longer timeout. Don't feel guilty about this, okay? You're actually in the long run, you're helping him out. You're helping him understand. This is not what we're looking for. And again, like I said, you can't just let him jump all over your guests. Drop. Good. Wait. Good boy. You beat a good boy. Wait. Yes. Good boy.